Tonight on the South Today, a new era could be dawning for an historic Dunedin castle as the City Council grants building consents. Queenstown Airport asks for public input to its master plan as it forecasts increasing passenger numbers. And residents in Alexandra and Clyde look better to look forward rather to better tasting tap water after major upgrades. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Hannah Wilkins. It's the start of a new era for the ruins of an old Dunedin castle. The City Council has granted consent for development at Cargill's Castle, with volunteers hoping to turn the site into a major tourist attraction. The ruins of Cargill's Castle overlooking Dunedin may soon become a local tourist attraction. The historic site is about to become a hive of activity. After the Dunedin City Council granted building consent to the Cargill's Castle Trust to begin work on the structure. It's been a long time coming for the Trust. The group's been fighting for more than 25 years to protect the castle, after the former ballroom was demolished in 1996. COVID's really put us back a couple of years, you know, the engineers and architects, everything went out the window for a long time, so to, to really get that finally into council for permit and to get the permit approved is uh, it's a big step forward for us. The permit allows the trust to begin the first stage of its development plans with steel bands to be placed around the top of the walls to stabilise and strengthen the building. The 21 room mansion was originally built in 1877, high above St Clair and known as the Cliffs. It's one of only three castles in New Zealand. The most well-known being Dunedin's Larnack Castle on Otago Peninsula, along with the much newer Riverstone Castle, just north of Oamaru. Cargill's Castle Trust Chairman Stephen de Graff says they also want to make it easier for the public to reach their future attraction. That's one thing we're looking for this year is to start sort of constructing a track from the castle side over towards the Highgrove subdivision. So we've got sort of walking access from there. The aim is to have Stage 1 completed by the end of the year before going on to stage two, which includes creating floors, stairways and viewing platforms. It's been a long, long time really. We've been working on it for a long time and treating water at different stages, waiting for access to open up and, and funding. The entire project is expected to cost up to $2 million, which means more fundraising for the Trust, starting with a Heritage Homes Open Day this Sunday. In Dunedin, the South Today. Police were still working at a house of interest late this afternoon in the west of Christchurch. It followed a mass police response, including a call-out for the AOS. Four people have been arrested in Christchurch after the armed defenders squad surrounded a property in the suburb of Hay Hay on Wednesday morning. The quartet are due to appear in the Christchurch District Court on various charges. Around 10 police vehicles and a sniffer dog were used as part of the operation. A nearby resident, who didn't want to be named, says she saw police and members of the armed defenders squad arrive and quickly surround the house on Hay Hay Road, announcing they had a search warrant. She witnessed armed police arresting a man at the back of the property, while encouraging another occupant to come out of the house. The resident doesn't know who owns or lives at the address, but says she's heard barking and banging from the house in the past. Police confirmed they did obtain a search warrant for the property and we're still working at the scene late on Wednesday afternoon. In Christchurch, the South, today. Queenstown Airport is forecasting passenger numbers to rise by a third over the next decade. The expectation has influenced the airport's long-awaited master plan, which includes a terminal extension, improved public transport links and a proposed ferry jetty on Lake Whakatipu. A chance for the community to give feedback on Queenstown Airport's long-term strategic plan as it looks towards the future. The airport's draft 10-year master plan is out for public consultation as the company looks to enhance infrastructure to meet the needs of both locals and internationals. Areas of focus include improving safety and efficiency, better customer service and maximising the airport's connections to the landscape and environment. Short-term priorities will target significant changes to the airfield with the construction of a parallel taxi lane, adding a safety intervention called EMAS, and locating the helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft to a new precinct. And a modest expansion to the terminal to ensure that we're able to meet the demands of travellers into the future, 
and to create a terminal that represents and reflects the, the destination in our region and that people who live here are proud of. Queenstown Airport CEO Glenn Sowery says they're keen to hear from the community around what features in the plan they like and where the airport could improve its initial draft to ensure a better experience for future visitors. So we're really open-minded to hearing from people what about this airport do they want to see adjusted or changed to ensure that it meets their needs uh, in the years ahead. The airport will also continue its decarbonisation efforts, creating a more energy efficient terminal and creating infrastructure for electric powered planes expected in the next decade. Public consultation is open for a month, allowing time for planning work for projects to begin early next year so that construction can get underway quickly. In Queenstown, the South Today. Dunedin school zones are set to get safer for pupils, with speed limits being lowered to 30 kilometres an hour around all schools. New speed limit signs will mark the beginning and end of the school zones around the city. The changes are part of an interim speed management plan to help implement NZTA's road safety strategy of Road to Zero. The DCC plans to work with local police and Waka Kotahi on educating schools, families and communities to ensure a smooth transition to the newly adjusted speed limits. In most places, the 30 kilometre zones will only apply before and after school hours, with signage and installations due to be completed by the end of July. Otago Museum staff breathed a sigh of relief earlier this week after being granted extra funding from the Dunedin City Council in the annual plan. The museum will receive a 5% increase in its annual levy, the increase narrowly supported by councillors in a 7-6 to six vote. The boost comes as inflation puts the museum under serious pressure. The museum had originally asked for a 7% permanent increase. Director Ian Griffin understands the pressure the council is under, but says a more sustainable long-term funding solution is needed. So we're all very pleased about the result, and we know um, it's a really tough year for the council. Uh, so we know it's a tough decision, and we appreciate the support that those councillors gave. Tahura Otago Museum will also have its rates relief increased by 1.6%, but Griffin believes it should be the job of central government to fund the museum, given the international significance of some of their displays, with the team planning to argue their case with the government. In Dunedin, The South Today. Alexandra and Clyde residents will be welcoming the end of lime scale at the bottom of their kettles as the region's new water treatment plant upgrade is completed. Some state-of-the-art equipment making a splash in central Otago. The water supply for the Alexandra and Clyde districts have had a major upgrade. The Central Otago District Council began work to improve the local water supply in 2018 with the goals of making the water safer and catering for the region's growing population. The upgrade project cost more than $16 million, which included expanding the Clyde ball field and constructing a membrane treatment plant. The new plant also meets New Zealand standards for parasite testing, an upgrade that the current water supply did not have. Central Otago Mayor Tim Cadogan was perhaps stretching the truth a little as he claimed the new water tastes better than champagne when he took his first sip. But residents will get to sample the improved drop when the treatment plant begins operations next month. In Alexandra, the South Today. FI Yakane, still to come on the South today. Hundreds on a Highlanders star Aaron Smith with a surprise party ahead of his final home game. And to women's rugby, a Gore team spreads awareness around early detection of breast cancer. My mate John's in full attack mode. He's chopped prices on beds and bedroom furniture. <coughs> Lounge, dining and occasional have taken a beating. <coughs> There's 40, 50, even 60% off clearance items. <coughs> Buy now and pay nothing till November. Price chop. <coughs> Only at John's Where Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. Furniture from Stafford Street. And my mate John. 
Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third 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 finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line, every time. Here at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. Welcome back. It was the celebration of a major rugby career this afternoon in a Dunedin Mall with hundreds turning out to honour Highlanders player Aaron Smith. A haka was performed by local school pupils as rugby fans filled Dunedin's Meridian Mall to say a big thanks and farewell to the legendary halfback. Aaron Smith is set to play his last home game for the Highlanders this Friday night, rounding off a record-breaking 184 caps for the team over 12 years. He's one of a number of All Blacks shooting off overseas after this year's Rugby World Cup, with Smith's contract with Japan side Toyota Club kicking off next year. The Highlander star was presented with a banner filled with personal messages while fans lined up to get their posters and their jerseys signed. He's very fast and good. Um, and what did you get signed today? Um, just to show my jersey. Smith's being named in the starting lineup against the Reds this Friday for his final game at Forsyth Bar Stadium in the blue, gold and maroon. A women's rugby team in Gore is hoping to spread awareness of early detections of breast cancer. The Pioneer Rugby Club's women's team held a high tea event recently, giving women the chance to share their experiences. Pink was the prominent colour at the Pioneer Rugby Club on Sunday. Around 50 women took part in the pink ribbon high tea event in Gore, enjoying food and drinks while getting the chance to share their stories around breast cancer. Survivor Katie Moylan is among the 6% of women under 40 who developed the disease. She was diagnosed in 2020 and spoke about her journey with breast cancer. Sadly, we are seeing women younger and younger being diagnosed with this um, and they sort of seem to fall between the cracks a little bit. Moylan's encouraging anyone who's eligible for a routine mammogram to have the procedure done, saying early detection of the disease is key. The rugby club organised a range of activities throughout the day to help raise money for breast cancer research. We've had raffles and silent auctions and a lovely afternoon tea, morning tea. The Paint Pioneer Pink event raised more than $2,000, which is being donated to the Breast Cancer Foundation. In Gore, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Dunedin's Cargill's Castle received the green light for redevelopment with hopes it could be a major tourist attraction. Queenstown Airport unveiled its draft master plan and wants the public's input on expansion plans to accommodate growth. And Alexandra and Clyde residents welcome upgrades to their water treatment plant which will improve tap water quality and end lime scale issues. 
And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, and we welcome Associate Editor Mike Houlihan. Hello Mike. Good evening, Hannah. What can we expect in tomorrow's paper? Uh, we're having an extensive look at the finances of the University of Otago. Um, you may recall that uh, they've gotten some financial trouble at the moment. Mm. We're looking at exactly when the management knew they were in trouble and exactly how deep those troubles are. Okay. Speaking of financial troubles, we're also looking at the Queenstown roading uh, situation, which if you've been driving there recently, you'll know there are road works everywhere in the CBD. Mm. Uh, the cost of those are also escalating. Uh, right. We're also looking at uh, a story about the potential in, uh, damage to uh, habitat for an endangered lizard species, and our art section tomorrow, and that's got a big preview of the new exhibition at the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Wonderful. Well, we look forward to reading. Thank you for sharing this evening, Mike. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, expect a spell of strong northwesterly airflow to bring gusty winds and warmer temperatures to the region tomorrow and Friday. Heading to the top of the South Island, looking nice and fine with light winds and 17 degrees up in Nelson tomorrow. Greymouth's a bit cloudy with northerlies and 15, while Christchurch gets a bit more sunshine with northeasterlies and a high of 16. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, fine with northerlies and 17 in Ashburton tomorrow. To Timaru and Uwamaru, you'll get some high cloud with light winds and highs of 16 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, stunning through here tomorrow with freshening northwesterlies and late high cloud, looking for highs of 17 in Wanaka and Queenstown, Alexandra gets up to 19 degrees. Heading further south, cloud increasing with fresh northwesterlies through here tomorrow, by numbers it's a 16 degree day in Gore and Balclutha and down to 15 in the Catlins. And down to the deep south, well cloudy with nor'westerlies and 8 overnight in Invercargill. Tomorrow's fresh with light winds and cloudy skies with 15 before late rain. Friday's cloudy too with rain at times and near gale nor'westerlies and it'll be another 15 degree day down south. And finally heading to Dunedin, cloud tonight with northerlies and a low of 8. Thursday's looking mild with those winds around still. High cloud at times too, but otherwise a great day in the city with 16. And into Friday, thick high cloud with a few spits of rain and breezy northerlies, along with a high of 17 degrees before the weekend. And that's the news this Wednesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. Price Chop! My mate John's in full attack mode! There's 40, 50, even 60% off clearance items! Price Chop! My mate John! Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need. From answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one, we can help. Call Gillian's today. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
Competition. Drama. Competition. Rivalry. Marketing. Numbers. Atmosphere. Power. Fight. Attack. Intuition. Love. Hate. Money. Cash. Millionaires. Fans. 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 And fans. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs>